The pyramids of Giza have been one of the biggest mysteries throughout history. These massive structures defy all logic, and for 4,000 years, archaeologists have been trying to figure out answers to the thousands of questions about this place. But Zahi Hawass might have just figured it out. Join us as we bring you mind-blowing details about the mysteries of the Egyptian pyramids and how these might just change the way you've looked at these insane historical structures forever. It only takes one look at the pyramids to really see how important they had to be. These things were built to last the test of time, and that's exactly what they've done. The construction of the pyramids began over 4,500 years ago, around 2,550 BC during Pharaoh Khufu's reign. These grand structures were commissioned as colossal tombs for the Egyptian rulers. The ancient Egyptians had a profound belief in the afterlife and the concept of eternal life. The pyramids were designed as pathways to the afterlife, with elaborate rituals and preparations to ensure a smooth transition and the Pharaoh's ascent to godhood. Yes, they believed that life here on earth was just to prepare them for the real life they were going to have later, as gods. The burial chambers inside were full of treasures, artifacts, and sometimes even boats for the pharaoh's use in the afterlife. Adjacent to the pyramids were temple complexes dedicated to various gods. These temples were important for religious ceremonies, rituals, and offerings made by priests and devoted followers, ensuring divine favor for the pharaoh's journey into the afterlife. The pyramid's shape, often associated with the sun's rays, was considered a representation of the sun god Ra's benevolent energy. They were also believed to be a connection between the earth and the heavens, symbolizing the eternal nature of the pharaoh's rule and their divine status. So it was all connected, but even though we now understand the purpose of the pyramids, there are still a lot of questions. With every answer comes even more questions, and the cycle continues to repeat itself. The biggest one being, how on earth did the ancient Apeshans even build this thing? Estimates vary. But constructing the pyramids likely required tens of thousands of laborers, including skilled craftsmen, stonemasons, and unskilled workers. The workforce needed to be made up of people with various skills, from quarrying and transportation of stones to masonry and construction. They needed thousands of people to get the job done. Even if you take the building process out of it for a second, housing and provisions for such a large workforce pose significant logistical challenges in and of themselves. The ancient Egyptians likely set up labor camps or temporary settlements near construction sites to accommodate workers and oversee operations. Providing food for thousands of workers required careful planning. Slaves were mostly the ones doing all the hard labor, and they didn't exactly have the best diet. But if there are two things that don't go together, it's underfed people and physical labor. Archaeological evidence suggests that workers were likely provided with food, including bread, beer, and meat, to keep them healthy enough during their laborious tasks. It's also believed that during the Nile's annual flooding, when agricultural work was limited, many farmers likely joined the labor force for pyramid construction, contributing to the workforce's size during these months. The workforce might have operated in shifts or rotated periodically, allowing for rest and ensuring a continuous labor force. This wasn't exactly something that could be built without so many people on board. What no one can deny, though, is the fact that the engineering feats demonstrated in lifting and placing massive stones for the construction of the pyramids are among the most impressive aspects of their creation. Machinery didn't exist, so they had to get creative to somehow get those stones to the pyramids. The process would have gotten harder as they climbed up higher and higher. One prevailing theory is the use of ramps to transport and elevate the stones. Workers may have constructed earthen ramps spiraling around the pyramid's exterior, enabling the movement of stones to increasingly higher levels. The Egyptians probably also used ropes made from plant fibers, as well as simple pulley systems to hoist stones. By attaching ropes to wooden sledges carrying stones and using manpower or animals to pull, they could lift and position the massive blocks. But even with that, there's so much that has to go into making sure that each stone gets to where it needed to be. But despite all the theories and experiments, significant questions persist regarding the exact methods used for lifting and positioning stones with such precision and scale. The absence of detailed records and the gradual evolution of construction techniques make things even harder to figure out here. 
What's even crazier is that as the pyramids are explored, archaeologists keep finding new things about them that make them even more mysterious. One of these mysteries have just been uncovered by Zahi Hawass. Dr. Hawass is an Egyptian archaeologist and former Minister of State for Antiquities Affairs in Egypt, has been involved in numerous discoveries and research related to the Great Pyramid of Giza and other ancient Egyptian monuments. So this man knows exactly what he's talking about, and he's revealed things that no one saw coming. He unveiled a groundbreaking discovery, a previously unknown tunnel inside the pyramid, a mystery that had remained unsolved for over 4,500 years. This revelation marked a milestone in Egypt's exploration of its ancient wonders, particularly the structure of the Great Pyramid of Khufu. This discovery was made because of the ongoing Scan Pyramids project initiated in 2015. This project aimed to uncover hidden chambers, passages, or any concealed architectural features within the pyramid without physically damaging the structure. The primary objective was to find out as much as possible about the pyramid's construction and potential hidden spaces using non-invasive technological methods. One of the key technologies used in this project was infrared thermography, a method that detects temperature differences within the pyramid's structure. Variations in temperature can indicate structural anomalies or spaces not visible to the naked eye. These temperature discrepancies could help researchers identify areas of interest for further investigation. Not just that, but 3D simulations also played a crucial role in creating detailed virtual models of the pyramid. By using advanced software and architectural data, scientists reconstructed intricate 3D representations of the pyramid's interior and exterior. These simulations allowed them to explore hypothetical scenarios, study potential voids or chambers, and plan where to direct subsequent investigations. Another innovative technique utilized in the Scan Pyramids project was cosmic ray imaging. Cosmic ray particles constantly bombard the Earth, and by measuring their interactions with the pyramid structure, researchers could create detailed images of its interior. This non-invasive imaging technique helped map the internal structure of the pyramid, identifying voids or hidden spaces that traditional methods couldn't reveal. Over the years, the collaborative efforts of archaeologists, engineers, and scientists involved in the Scan Pyramids project tirelessly analyzed data collected through these non-invasive technologies. Their goal was to gradually uncover any hidden passages, chambers, or architectural anomalies within the Great Pyramid without causing any damage to the ancient structure, because the building itself stands as an archaeological find. So while it's important for us to find out more about what's inside it, we also can't cause any harm to it either. The unfinished corridor appears to have a distinct purpose, according to Mustafa Waziri, the head of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities. Waziri suggested that this corridor was likely created with the intent of redistributing the immense weight of the pyramid. This redistribution was possibly directed either around the pyramid's main entrance, which is currently used by tourists and situated about seven meters away from the corridor, or potentially around another undiscovered chamber or space within the pyramid's structure. The purpose behind this unfinished corridor seems to revolve around a strategic engineering concept aimed at managing the pyramid's structural weight. By redirecting or redistributing this weight, the builders might have aimed to alleviate pressure or stress on specific sections of the pyramid, thereby ensuring its stability and longevity. This architectural strategy could explain the presence of this corridor and its location relative to key points within the pyramid's structure. Waziri also mentioned plans to continue scanning and exploring this area further to uncover additional information. The goal is to delve deeper into what lies beneath the corridor or at the end of it, utilizing advanced scanning technologies and archaeological methods. These efforts aim to unveil potential chambers, hidden spaces, or architectural elements that could provide critical insights into the pyramid's construction, function, and the intentions behind the creation of this particular corridor. Waziri has also revealed that within another section of the pyramid, atop the king's burial chamber, there are five rooms. These rooms, situated above the chamber where the pharaoh was interred, are thought to have served a similar purpose as the unfinished corridor discovered earlier, strategically redistributing the weight to ensure the pyramid's stability and structural integrity. He also suggested the possibility that the pharaoh might have had more than one burial chamber, indicating the potential complexity and significance of the internal architecture within the Great Pyramid. 
In 2017, the Scan Pyramids Project researchers made another significant announcement. They uncovered a void approximately 30 meters long within the Great Pyramid using similar advanced technology. This discovery marked the first major inner structure found within the pyramid since the 19th century. That means that along with all of the questions about how the pyramids were built that we talked about earlier on in the video, there's one more question. How did the people who designed these pyramids know they'd have to build empty spaces to distribute the weight? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this. We'll see you in the next one.